Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, my buddy Simon and I review the legendary Fujifilm TX1. We met up in Zurich for a Saturday photo walk a couple of weeks ago in order to take a closer look at this beautiful panoramic camera and um, of course also get to know Zurich a bit better. Um, the Fujifilm TX1 is an interchangeable lens 35mm panoramic rangefinder camera that was first released in 1998. Um, it was produced by Fujifilm, but it also comes out of a cooperation with the Swedish camera manufacturer Hasselblad, um, which markets it under the name Hasselblad x -Bahn. So this beauty here looks familiar to you. You might have seen it before in a black version um, and branded with um, the Hasselblad branding and an x -Pan on it. The Fujifilm version here comes in a champagne color that is very similar to the Contax G series, almost uncannily, so to speak. And if you see them side by side, you can really see a strong resemblance between the two. Please also note that we are focusing here on the Fujifilm TX1, so the first version and not its successor, the Fujifilm TX2. Um, let's take a closer look at the special camera and get to know Zurich a bit more. Unfortunately, it rained on us in the morning when we arrived, so um, we took a brief detour during the rain and um, visited Ars Imago, which is a completely analog um, photography store in Zurich. And I can highly recommend um, dropping by there because they're even creating um, actual products for the analog community, new products and have a really nice and beautiful store and you can get all sorts of, of nice cameras and of course fresh film. Um, after lunch we were finally able to shoot some film and managed to not just shoot black and white but also some color negative and even slide film. So let's dive in there. Already at first glance, the beautiful design and high build quality of this camera becomes apparent. The body is made out of titanium and aluminum. The camera's back is covered with a rubberized material that provides also a, a solid um, thumb grip for your right hand. Interestingly, the camera also provides a, a front grip for your right hand and it is possible to swap that out and it is available in both wood and a rubberized material. And um, there are even custom made ones that you can purchase online. Um, so there are a lot of providers for that. And the one that Simon has here is made out of wood. Um, the Fujifilm TX1 is a coupled rangefinder um, camera system that offers three different lenses. It usually came with a 45 millimeter F4 and the 90 millimeter F4. And in addition to that, there is a 30 millimeter wide angle F um, 5.6 lens available, but that requires an external viewfinder and is fairly rare and quite expensive. Most importantly, the camera um, offers two different shooting modes or um, image ratio modes. Um, the traditional format, so 25, um, 24 by um, 36 millimeter image ratio and the panoramic mode, which is a 24 by um, 65 millimeter for which it is always also famous. Um, when you shoot the panoramic mode, um, you get about 20 to 21 images out of a traditional 36 um, exposure roll. And what I find particularly interesting is that you can basically switch mode um, mid roll and the film counter will even show you the remaining frames left, even when you switch in between. Um, the built-in viewfinder is really bright and automatically adjusts depending to the selected film format and also to the lens mounted. So that is really nice and it also comes with automatic parallax compensation.
what about the features of this camera? The Fujifilm TX1 comes with a focal plane shutter with speeds ranging from 1 1 thousandth of a second to 8 seconds plus a bulb mode. The flash sync speed is 1 1 25th of a second. There's also self-timing mode um, or self-timer mode um, that goes off after a 10 second delay. The built-in light meter is a TTL center weighted averaging meter that unfortunately covers a rather small area. Um, so the measurement is taken from a rather small area in comparison to the large field of view of the panoramic mode. And this means that potentially, especially when you're shooting slide film or something where it really depends on correct exposure, that you might get a, a wrong exposure because um, of very bright um, areas and very dark areas in the same panoramic image and um, the actual measurement only being taken in a very limited area in the center. So you might want to consider that um, when shooting panoramic images. The ISO is set either automatically for the X encoded films or can be set by the dial here on the front of the camera manually. There is an aperture priority mode, um, so an automatic mode and a manual mode and um, the light meter's reading is displayed inside the viewfinder uh, so you basically get an indication with a minus um, warning you of potential underexposure, a plus warning you of overexposure and a circle indicating correct exposure. Interestingly the selected shutter speed is not displayed inside the viewfinder but only on the back of the camera on a little LCD display. So what typically happens is that uh, as a shooter you would tap the um, shutter release button and then put down the camera, look at the back LCD to double check on the selected shutter speed in order to make sure that it is not too slow in some situations and um, only then actually put it back up onto your eye and take the shot. But you basically get used to that, but it's an interesting kind of thing. Besides the shutter speed, the LCD also displays interesting settings and information like the remaining um, battery power or um, the ISO setting, for instance. In addition to that, there is an exposure compensation mode and also a dial for that on the very right of on top of the camera with um, Basically, it ranges, it ranges from plus 2 to minus 2 EV and you can select it in half stops. It can be set via the style here and there's also an auto exposure bracketing feature available. Um, the same dial on the very right also lets you turn on the camera and select two different motor drive modes. Uh, the S mode standing for single shooting mode and the C for continuous shooting mode which lets you shoot up to 3 frames per second in the standard format and up to 2 frames per second in the panoramic mode. But personally I wouldn't know when exactly I would need to shoot fast panoramic scenes. So, But if you do, you have a continuous mode here. Interestingly, as briefly indicated earlier, the film counter draw, counts down, um, letting you know how many frames you have left. And um, you can even change uh, the format size mid-roll, as mentioned before, and then the frame counter adjusts automatically as well, which is really, really nice. The camera requires two CO2 batteries, um, providing um, six volts of power and um, these batteries are still readily available and according to Simon um, last at least 20 rolls. So what about the lenses? 
Fujifilm lenses are known for their outstanding sharpness, great color rendition and overall quality. And these lenses here really lived up to our expectations. Um, what is particularly noticeable is that they are obviously optimized for panoramic shooting. So you get great, um, great corner sharpness and hardly any vignetting on the um, 45 millimeter lens, none vignetting at all on the 90 millimeter lens. And only in the case of the 30 millimeter, you do have quite some vignetting, but there's even an expensive filter available to compensate for that. With respect to distortion, you get hardly any um, across the frame, so it's fairly limited. Um, and whenever we had it, it was basically on us because our, comp our, our composition was not straight enough and we were not doing a great job. And due to the panoramic format, it was kind of, um, yeah, the effect was made worse, so to speak. But in general, just looking at the lens, um, there's hardly any distortion. The most important features of these lenses is the color rendition. So they render colors beautifully and that makes the camera in combination to the panoramic format of course well suited for shooting landscapes. Um, so if you're a landscape shooter, definitely take a look at this beautiful camera because of the lenses and the panoramic format. The only downside one could say is that you do need quite a bit of light when shooting with this camera because of the um, limited maximum aperture of usually f4 with these lenses. Um, the reason for that is that technically these lenses are uh, medium format lenses um, because of course the, the width of the panoramic format is with 65 millimeters basically the same like in a 6x6 to 6x7 medium format camera. So it makes much more sense to compare these lenses to the ones on the Mamiya 6 or Mamiya 7 for instance and not to a regular rangefinder 35 millimeter camera. And as always you can compensate for that by using um, slightly faster films or just bringing a tripod. So what are our personal impressions when it comes to handling of the camera? What struck me most personally is the cinematic look you can create with a panoramic format, especially if you look for certain motifs, um, you instantly get that beautiful cinematic feel to it. And that I really appreciate and I could see myself using it with a cinefilm for instance and uh, would love that. Um, the only downside here is that it is quite tricky to get a composition that is straight and right. So um, because of that width of your, um, of your frame, you sometimes have a slight turn to it when holding the camera and not noticing it um, only or only noticing it when you take in the frame afterwards and look at the final image. At least that happened to me, that it was kind of a little bit off. It also affects um, situations where you have a slightly off perspective that results in quite heavy distortions. And of course you can do that by intent as Simon did with his um, New York City um, building pictures um, that you can find on his Instagram. Um, but if you don't do it intentionally, a slight off perspective or slightly off perspective results in heavy distortions that were not intended. Um, furthermore, because of the size of the frame, you it's really difficult to get a great composition in terms of the elements in the frame that you actually want to be in the frame. It often happens that you see something really nice and then you put the camera up and you notice, ah, there's something kind of sticking into my composition that I don't really want to be there. And then you start moving around and trying to optimize for it. So it, in my opinion, it takes some getting used to it, but it also lets you shoot, shoot completely different and see the world differently and get quite some cinematic results. Technically, what was interesting is that when loading film, the film is actually um, completely loaded onto the spool inside the camera. And with each frame you take, it is 
basically shot back into the film canister. So the other way around than it usually is done. And this is also why the exposures are counted downward in the film counter and the counter automatically adjusts if you change the film format because it basically knows how much film it has left. It also means that in case you open up the camera accidentally mid-roll, which sometimes happens as most of you have experienced before, um, um, probably unfortunately, um, the shots you have already taken are kind of protected because they are inside the film canister already and only the part that was not exposed yet is kind of gone. And that can, can really be a lifesaver in some situations. What I personally found a bit confusing, and I've mentioned that before, is that the shutter speed is not displayed inside the viewfinder for such a modern camera. It would have been easy to do that and only on the back display. So you have that effect of looking down at the back LCD sometimes. And the only major downside of this camera is basically its price. Because um, as a kit in um, mint conditions, you basically pay um, at least 3,000 euros for it. The, the good thing is that the upside is kind of that you can still have it in mint conditions, mostly from Japan, um, but it is quite an expensive and hefty price tag here. Simon's version um, originally came via a friend who had bought it from um, Bellamy Hunt, so the Japan camera hunter, in mint condition, and then sold it to Simon. And um, he never had any problems, but at the same time, it is an electronic camera. So you always have this slight fear going on that at some point it might just die on you and basically become a brick and be not useful anymore. So that is the, the danger that you live with, similar to the Context G series. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat different episode about the Fujifilm TX1, or also called Hasselblad x that Simon and I shot in Zurich. If you liked this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg, and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.